producers is your publisher, Kristen Brinley, and I'm here with Mark Wiltshire of Kensington Vanguard, and he is in our um, April edition, so if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. It's a beautiful spread on Mark, and you know, it's an honor to have you on, Mark. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Abs absolutely. You know, um, so Mark established for Kensington Vanguard um, National Land Services. He established the region um, back in 2014. And um, that's correct, right? But 2014? It is. Yes, yeah. Right. Uh, we have seven offices now, right? Like seven. So there's seven. Uh, yeah. Good. Great job. Um, and PR, you were association. Um, you were the um, partner or the affiliate of the year. Um, Hall of Fame as well for them. So you really, you have given back in a large way. And um, you do the same here at Real Producers. We appreciate you. So tell us, you know, how did you, um, how did you get where you are right now? Tell us what you do um, at Kensington Vanguard. And, you know, how did you end up in, in title? Yeah. Well, I, uh, first, I only appear on podcasts that begin with a lot of uh, compliments. That's a, uh, you know, bedrock principle. Uh, no, thank you uh, for all of that. I started in title, um, straight out of law school, uh, I had been looking at um, real estate or litigation were kind of the, the two points of emphasis in my coursework during that time. And a gentleman uh, that I met with, uh, with his firm, thought that some of my alternate dispute resolution uh, background would, uh, would bode well in this arena, asked if I would be interested in transaction work. Um, and, uh, and the rest is history. Uh, so, it's it was a little bit of momentum, uh, but I, uh, I I started in the Woodbridge office for at that time a uh, title comp a regional title company RGS Title with a strong presence in this area, um, and was there for just under ten years uh, before uh, moving to join Kensington Vanguard to open up uh, a brick and mortar location for them in this area. Uh, and uh, because of where my primary sphere of influence was, I opted to place that physically in Woodbridge as well, uh, just a few miles down the road. And uh, from there, started really growing, uh, growing the region. That so now, did you always think you'd be entitled? Oh, I mean, from the time I was a child, scrolling title <laughs> professional in notebooks, dotting the eyes with hearts. Um, no, it's. Uh, no, I, uh, I didn't much like the average, uh, client. I had no idea what a title company was, um, until such time as an agent told me that I needed to close somewhere, uh, when buying my first place. So, um, no, it's, uh, I, I did not, I actually thought, uh, from the time I was in second grade, I, I wrote down that I wanted to be a writer and a lawyer. Uh, so I was an English major with a creative writing focus and went to law school. Um, the uh, practical side won out and I uh, ended up uh, in the title world. Uh, I still do write, but I did think for years and years that a uh, writing professional was probably where I was gonna end up uh, if I had my druthers, which is me just wanting to say the word druthers. <laughs> well, that, that makes sense as a writer that you <laughs> yes, <you're> right, so. <laughs> um, well, tell us, so um, you got into title and then what, do you, what exactly do you do um, at Kensington Vanguard? Like you, you run the region, like what, tell us a little bit more about that. So uh, in addition, I still do maintain uh, oversight for day-to-day -day operations for the Woodbridge office. Um, the, uh, I've made sure to surround myself with a kind of talent there uh, and experience that keeps me from being able to mess it up, which is good. Uh, and that also frees me up to be able to oversee uh, the, uh, the growth efforts and ultimate have ultimate profit and loss responsibilities for the region. So, um, I, uh, so I, we have a mandate for growth. We have throughout my entire tenure uh, from April of 2014 to, uh, to present. Uh, and that has certainly has not changed. So uh, identifying those opportunities, whether it's bringing on talent or acquiring companies, um, I've been a part of all of those uh, efforts and opening, um, opening offices. Um, the key thing for us relationship, uh, real estate, is always going to be a relationship-driven business. So uh, we don't just try to find somebody who can go 
win business or you know get in front of people and keep us present we understand that that person uh that person with their own relationships needs to be supported by uh, a processing team uh who who can then shepherd that uh, every transaction all the way through to the table uh because ultimately once the contract comes in that's that's really the day-to-day -day, um manager of that of that relationship and that's where the agent has to have a great deal of trust as well uh, every transaction is a possible referral tree uh, that you know, that that agent's trying to plant to keep keep food on their table and uh, and keep the momentum going. So it's a uh, high stakes, uh, but it's you know, but certainly not boring. Not boring. Every day, right? Every day is different. Lord knows, <laughs> so I'm aging like an old banana. <laughs> um, what sets you apart or makes you different, Mark? Um, the, I would probably say, I think that through the effort of, you, you got to try to maximize your business, right? And so you're trying to do as you're trying to do every transaction uh, possible. And so you want to be working uh, on, on tons of files, but I think we do a very good job. I try to do a very good job of instilling in my team the the impulse to make sure that there is always a respect maintained for the gravity of each individual transaction. So I think if I to answer that, I would really say it's the focus on the stakes for the clients. Um, it is very easy in a to handle the, the number of files. There has to be a framework. You have to be exceedingly process driven so that uh, there is a, a level of consistency uh, and predictability for agents, lenders, um, and, uh, and also for us to simply be able to handle the volume and scale. But uh, for that client, you know, they're, they're doing this once, sometimes once in a lifetime, but certainly once every three to five years, maybe uh, on average. And so it matters. It's large sums of money and shelter, unless I'm going to start insulting people's kids large sums of money and shelter are like numbers two and three, right? So um, in that in that case, if, if we're doing it without that heart involved, they can feel that, it creates anxiety. That anxiety is then uh, translated to frustration uh, or anger, depending on uh, on the individual that's communicated to the agent. Uh, that's that's additional incoming that that agent doesn't need. They don't want, they don't have the bandwidth themselves to have to monitor uh, the title company as well uh, and, and put out fires because the client has started, their, their trust has started to erode. So I would probably say that rigorous adherence to, uh, to the stakes for the client or uh, understanding those stakes. Yeah, that, that sounds like wonderful standards, actually, like humanizing mm -hmm. every transaction to the individual. And yet still, you guys do a lot of business and you're in seven locations now in the PMP. So like, yeah, no, that's great. How do you find clients? So how do y'all get clients? Um, there's a lot of begging uh, involved. <laughs> uh, the, uh, no, um, now it used to be when I first started um, in 04, um, child labor laws were different then. I, uh, we would, we could walk into, uh, you could walk into brokerages, wander around, uh, you know, nobody, you know, just go stand in a doorway, make yourself a nuisance until the agent finally said, look, if you leave my office, I'll give you a deal. Uh, but now with increased affiliations and ownership interest for brokerages with, uh, with title companies, most places you can't, you're not allowed past the front desk. Um, so it was, I like to, I like to teach at, uh, at uh, associations. Uh, I like to hold events where, where we're uh, providing information to agents, but I'll tell you the primary source of new business for us and new relationships is on the other side of a contract. Uh, our agent um, or our lender is uh, generally the agent is driving that business to us and the agent on the other side may never work with the Kensington Vanguard office or only one in McLean or, or Gainesville or whatever the case may be. And so uh, by just knocking it out of the park uh, on that transaction, having them be really I mean, stunned at the level of service and attention and expertise from the processing team all the way through to the table. And if it's one where I'm going to be sitting with them at the table, I try to show up with the appropriate level of respect for the clients and make sure, you know, humor doesn't make everybody comfortable, right? There are, tra there are some transactions you got to know who you're in the room with. You walk in and start telling jokes and they're going to feel like this isn't being taken seriously or something's being missed or, you know, the attention to detail is not going to be there. So you got to figure out who you're in the room with. It can't be a one size fits all proposition. 
but recognizing that and being able to identify who you're in the room with to kind of find the right key to unlock them, let the air out of the balloon, so to speak, and get them relaxed with the process exactly so that they can get back to the enthusiasm and excitement about the home purchase or, uh, you know, or what that home sale will mean for them as opposed to the stress of getting to that point. Um, so uh, when, you, when you can handle the transaction that way, the contrast between you and other title companies for those agents is often what has them uh, note, uh, make, make note of that and then frequently uh, brings them back to us, which is, which is kind of an organic way to grow. Yeah. That's, no, that's, that's beautiful. So why is it so important to working with um, Kensington Vanguard? Why is that so important? Uh, because I'm there. Um, no, uh, it's, uh, it is. Humor works with me. I, I laugh yeah. a lot with you. So. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, no, I, um, it is, you know, title companies is not, I think you, I think I've made it clear it is not a sexy profession necessarily, um, but it's, it's really necessary, right? Um, the parties, the party, you know, the agents are there so that the parties don't have to necessarily trust each other and that they don't have to directly speak when they're so emotional about what's happening. Uh, and I like to say that the title company is kind of like the mortar between all the loose bricks in the transaction. Um, the, you know, all the money gets paid into us. We're dispersing out and all that. And when things are smooth, it can seem like a fungible task. Uh, like, oh, well, one title company is just as good as another. You talk to an agent who's had a transaction go sideways and uh, and or start to and uh, and find out what their title company did for them at that point, right? The uh, no one looks at a building and says, "Man, I love the mortar." They're only talking about the bricks. But you take that mortar out, we've got ourselves an issue. So it, we're just in a place where the smooth or easy transaction is getting increasingly rare. Uh, so I think it is the sense that one title company is the same as another is starting to really be undone uh, in a way that title companies have never been more, uh, more important, or at least um, they, the sense of their importance has never been uh, appreciated to a greater degree uh, than it is right now. And for as long as I've been doing this, I've, like I said, my, my senior processor in Woodbridge has been doing this over 30 years. You know, that's, that's, those are the types of people I surround myself with because you have to have, be able to draw on that type of experience uh, in order to navigate what it is. I'm constantly surprised by the multitude of issues that can, cry, that can crop up in, a tra in any given transaction. Um, and so you gotta be able to take it apart and put it back together over and over again in many different ways. So um, I think it really comes down to, to the talent and the experience. So I am, um, so first I, I love everything you just said. And uh, I've seen so many interesting things and heard so many stories of, of just multiple things from one property, um, from agents and from, from our partners. What about a secret weapon? So like something, someone, something you attribute a great deal of your success to, what would that be for you? Um, this is going to sound, I feel like it's going to sound too small to be a secret weapon, um, but it's, it's curiosity. Ultimately, um, it is, and not, not just for the work, uh, but it's curiosity in the, uh, in the, in the requirements on the other partners and vendors involved in the transaction. It's, it comes down to um, wanting to understand what the challenges are for an agent in a transaction, for the lender in the transaction, what those points of stress are for them. Uh, if you can identify the rocks that people keep tripping over, I might be able to help set a path for our process that navigates around them, overcomes them, or at least at a minimum anticipates them so that we have a plan in place. Um, I find that if you can give an agent uh, back time uh, you know, and uh, that it is, there's not a better gift you can give uh, to, uh, to an agent. And so um, I, that curiosity in their requirements and, and what's needed of them and where their successes come from, right? We can navigate towards those successes, steer away from uh, the challenges ideally. And uh, I think that that's really served me well. I love that curiosity piece. Um, a lot of different entrepreneurs or people that scale on a really large level, they talk about curiosity. And um, yeah, I don't think that's too small at all. I think that's a perfect answer. 
um, what, what is one inside tip you'd give um, to help with using, um, you know, uh, your profession? So in title, like what's a tip that you would recommend? Um, I think a good title company, well, I'll say this. I think I got good at what I do the moment I realized it should not be about me at all. Um, that uh, it is, you're, I'm sitting with the buyer or the seller for you know a half an hour to an hour, generally speaking. Um, it is, you know, th this agent has been living with this person. In some countries, they'd be married by the time they get to the closing <laughs> table. Um, and so for me to try to get in there and, and buoy me or try to be, uh, create a relationship where I should be working to try to deepen a relationship between the client and their and their uh, agent or their lender um, is uh, is ill advised. So ultimately, um, to I think that starts earlier than the table, right? So if I can under if if an agent or a lender tells us how they work best, then we can start building our services around them in a way that can um, in a way that can again give them back time can create just pick up some administrative speed if you like to call and not email um, then if you let us know hey look I, you know I like I prefer to call instead of going back and forth an email call me so we can kind of kick it around uh, really drill down then we can we can do those types of things we may follow up with an email so that we can paper our file appropriately etc but we can start to meet you where you're at um, I've got my my cell phone is in my signature block and all my business cards now I've got you know so I get texts and stuff like that and I I get it that's how that's how this thing is evolving so um, if they tell us how they work from the outset we can start to tailor it a bit more to them and uh, and and help them kind of pick up the speed instead of having to adjust to us why um why did you choose to work with real producers so you're a part of nova real producers and you're our spotlight why did you choose to work with us to be honest with you um i am i i think i got this from my mother i am really attracted to excellence in any endeavor uh it doesn't matter how small it is how big it is um how important or seemingly mundane um wanting to do something well and just really get it right and be great at it, having it eat away at you a little bit. If it just was, a, a, you know, I'm, I'm attracted to that and I, I love it. And Real Producers is about creating that environment for in the real estate industry. It is about putting people committed to excellence. It's really, really hard to be a great realtor, especially, and it's only getting harder because expectations are increasing and patience is decreasing. That's, that's a, that is a very difficult task in a service industry um, or a difficult environment to maintain any level of service, let alone continue to grow uh, and improve it. And so you guys, you, you awesome. create, thank you, you, uh, you create rooms and events built around putting those individuals in the same place to, to be able to share ideas, share those experiences, just simply to not feel, real estate can end up feeling a little bit isolated. And in that isolation, that competitive nature can be focused on, et cetera. Um, there's so many different ways to skin the cat. They're great agents. There are some common threads, but then they go about doing it so differently, uh, uh, certainly at the edges, but even, even uh, closer in. And um, it's, it's awesome to see, it's inspiring, uh, but I'm always gonna be drawn to a room, uh, to, the, to a room like that. And you guys have, uh, you guys are the ones building it. So yeah, basically you're, uh, you can't get rid of me now, Chris. You're, you're... <laughs> <laughs> we, we, would, we wouldn't want to, and we very much, we very much appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with our real producers? Um, I, uh, enjoy long walks on the, no, I, um, no, not, um, only really that I, I invite any, any, whether it is part of a transaction that we're handling or not, I actually enjoy this stuff, um, away from, you know, you get away, especially you get away from the pressures or time constraints or whatever the case may be. Um, look me up, uh, whether it's to actually discuss an issue or if it's to grab coffee and just talk about the business or whatever the case may be, just, I, I would welcome it. Um, I really, 
I, I, I do enjoy what I do. I enjoy the entire process. And like I said, I'm, I'm interested in understanding how other people are doing it. And, um, and between that and a, and again, that being drawn towards that excellence, that's, I would, I would love nothing more. So, uh, so please look me up and, uh, and reach out. I would, I would love to talk to you and just, you know, spend some time, get a meal or what have you. Yes, please make sure to, to reach out to Mark, check out his story in the April mm -hmm. issue. And I'm going to put his info below on here too. So um, thank you so much, Mark. No, thank you. I appreciate I, This was great. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>